เดี๋ยวเราจะต้องเอาไวไฟออกนี่เห็นไหมเทคนิคอันนี้เรานักข่าวสาวพอคุยกับคุณนัทอ๋อโอเคค่ะคุณสิบทางไว้นี้ใช่ไหมละเมื่อยไหมแต่ว่าไม่เมื่อยแต่ทีนี้โอต้องมองให้สายตามแต่ตอนนี้อ๋อโอเค because sometimes you can read the comment อ๋อยู่จะทักคุณลูกแบดแบอันนี้เลยอ่ะอันนี้ไลฟ์ไลฟ์อะไรวันนี้ขออนุญาตเป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะเพราะว่ามีหลายคนที่ว่าอยากได้อัปเดตเป็นภาษาอังกฤษแล้ววันนี้บอกที่อยู่กับนักข่าวหนึ่งท่านชื่อว่าคุณแอดซึ่งอาสาใจดีมากจะมาตั้งคําถาม and and we name this topic the Thailand move general การเคลื่อนไหวภายใต้ไอผลพินอคเคียว alright okay all right Yeah, I hope the sound is okay. If ถ้าเกิดว่าเสียงไม่ชัดบ่นมาได้นะคะ So okay, I think most of us know that Pinocchio, the the wooden doll with with the long who has long nose and he his nose will be elongated every time. He tells a lie. Um, General Prayut has told us a lie uh, over four times already. That he promised the election and then he keep postponing it. And for the fourth time, we say enough is enough, and we start to have the movement. And and what part of the movement is that we we have his um, portrait as cartoon with the long nose, and then he become Prayut Nakio. Okay, for Pinocchio, General Pinocchio, for most people that understand. So, yeah, for foreign media. Um, yeah. I remember the last time when he said the election, it should be. It was before it moved. It, before it was moved, it was scheduled to be in November this year. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, what happened when he said that it wouldn't happen? What did you guys do? Uh, when he said he it cannot happen, it cannot take place this year. We said um, that's breaking promise, and we came out to call for election this year, and to stop the NCPO from um, continuing their power after the election because um, they have shown their intention that they want to continue in in power in in many circumstances. So the movement start with. With these two issue, one is we want the election this year, and the other thing is we want to stop them from um, prolonging their power illegally, um, illegitimately, uh, and that that was in January. We call it we want to vote movement. Okay, and thanks to we want to vote, I heard that. It um, generate the promise that there would be another election day, correct? Exactly. After our second protest, um, and they they see bigger number of people joining, they came out with the new promise to have the election in February two thousand nineteen. Um, but. You know the victory doesn't come without any price. So if you could tell me, like you know, by now, how many times have you come out and how many charges, how many lawsuits have been like up, piling up upon like against you guys? Okay, we have it in series, and now there are five, and um, I was involved in three among this. The first one, MBK thirty nine, is uh, when we gather on the skywalk in front of MBK. There was very brief um, protest, and 39 of us were charged. The second one on the 10th of um, February, on Russia d a m n e r we gather, and there are bigger number of people. Uh, RDN 50, which means 50 people were charged. The third one was in Chiang Mai University by a group of people who want to vote in Chiang Mai, and they gather in front of Chiang Mai University wall. 
uh, just in front of the university, six of them were charged. It was quite small. The fourth one in Pattaya, led by Janil Sirawit, um, this one, first seven people were charged, but after that they add on more number, and now 12 people are charged for Pattaya. This is the gathering just um, opposite to Pattaya festival, just beside the beach, and that's just a brief um, high park kind of speech. The fourth one is the last one and the biggest one is when we march from Thammasat University to the army and we have our speech there. Um, 57 of us were charged, so it's army 57. So altogether there are, there are five five incidents that give us the lawsuit. Okay, and all this, like, you know, uh, I understand that there are like a lawsuit on every case, mm. but also um, the charge is not just for the gathering more than five people. What are the charges that put, um, so far that we know that they're going to charge you with? Okay, each time the, the charge is divided between the those who are identified as, as leaders and those who are identified as the participants, huh? the leaders get sedition and the violating of NCPO order of for not gathering of political gathering more than five people and the third one usually we, we get also um, the it's like protest act like the gathering a political gathering act uh -huh. so this for the leader and for the participants they usually get the second and the third one mainly the NCPO order that prohibit any political gathering of more than five people. So how do you feel about all these charges? I, do you think it's fair that all these charges are being charged upon you? It's actually ridiculous. Uh, because, uh, okay, for the, for the sedition. Sedition has a jail term of seven years. What we did was just come out and talk against the junta. Uh -huh. But sedition is the law that is used for people like um, terrorists uh -huh. or those who tell, tell people to break the law. But what, what we did was just asking for election mainly. Uh -huh. So it's ridiculous. But for NCPO order, the order itself is actually against the, the constitution. Because we have Article 44 in the Constitution that guarantee the right of the citizen to gather and to protest peacefully and without any weapon. And this is in line with the um, Universal Declaration for Human Rights. Article 20 said that everybody has the right to gather, to protest. It's part of the freedom of expression. And we, we did it in line with all these basic human rights. So the NCPO order itself is not legitimate. And it's funny. <laughs> well, usually in normal circumstances or in other country with um, the, the basic human rights, like, you know, it might be funny, it might be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't think we are... Um, if you think about like all of this thing, do you think like you know the instigation is because like you know you upset the NCPO, or you upset the government somehow, or why do you think like you know your action just rub them in the wrong place? You mean why they're angry with our action? Yes. Because we are against them, so it's, it's as simple as that, right? Um, and using using the law as the as a weapon to shut the mouth of the people, uh, usual dictator strategy. We even have a specific term for this. Uh, in abbreviation, it is SLAP, Strategic Lawsuit Against Public Participation. And it is used um, worldwide by any dictator, um, which nowadays in the world there may be only a few dictators left, but they, they will use this strategy. It, it, Every time someone talk against them, they give the lawsuit, they put them in jail, and that is their, their weapon to, to stop people from protesting, from criticizing them. But this is not the soldiers who are arresting you, this is the police. So I'm just wondering about ah, the relationship. On the, the soldier, actually NCPO itself um, assigned a soldier to to come to the police 
and tell the police that uh, what we did is wrong and the police should charge us. So the NCPO is the injured person within the legal system. They are the one who give us the charge. The police is the one who process the case. Mm -hmm. But the, the police actually can choose not to process the case if it is not, you know, within the legal condition. But because they sing together, mm -hmm. uh, if you know our deputy chief police has very clear motivation that they want to put us in jail. From the first case of MBK 39, um, he was there himself at the police station to tell the police what to do. So our right is not protected by the police because they are serving the NCPO. Mm -hmm. um, how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? How does okay. it how does it make you feel that the police is actually not serving the people but serving the military government? How did it make, make you feel yeah, as a uh, citizen? Okay, it is a kind the same kind of feeling when you face injustice. It's hurt. It hurts. Yeah, whatever injustice is done to anybody, whether it's big or small, it hurt your feeling because every human wants justice it is like we want water we want air we want food spiritual spiritually every human being wants to have justice so it hurts especially when when it's done by someone who should have who has actually the duty and who is hired to protect justice <laughs> I understand. I feel you. Okay. Yeah. Um. This week is a very big week because it's a week before the long holidays, and it's such a big week for you guys because I think this is the second time for you to show up at the police station and the courthouse. Could you tell us briefly what happened since Monday? Okay. On on Monday we report ourselves to the police first time for our last case. Is the army. Army 57, uh -huh. but on Monday only five of us were there. The rest will postpone to to report themselves other day. Mm. So that day we re report ourselves, and the police, instead of doing it as normal process, like when we we report ourselves, they uh, give arrogation and they let us go. That's the normal process. But what happened on Monday is that they ask the court to detain us for they can ask the court to detain the defendant um, if there is the reason to do so each time for 12 days that's what the police try to do even when we are not under any condition to be detained mm. so that that's what happened on monday that's why we had to go to the court and and tell the court that we don't agree with the police and why and the court will have to judge whether to agree with the police or to agree with us luckily the court agree with us and protect our right that okay as as an as a the person who who is not found guilty yet you should be treated as an innocent and that's why we are free on monday uh -huh. well you could have if it this happened, you could have failed yourself, but I heard and I saw your post and I heard from many news sources that mm. you didn't want to fail yourself. Why would you want to like risk going to jail? Because by by insisting that if if we are if I am my right is violated at the beginning of the legal process, what, what justice could be guaranteed throughout the process? So my decision was to use my freedom as the evidence that something is wrong with the rule of law of this country. If that really happened, if the court agreed with the police to detain me, even before any investigation or arrogation take place. So I want to use my freedom as the evidence that something is wrong. Because if I agree to bail, what will happen is that they'll get me, they may agree to bail me out with certain condition. And one condition for sure is to stop me from doing further movement. And that is that means my rights is already harassed 
my right is already you know not there because they will order me to do something that is still in my basic human rights mm -hmm. so to agree to bail and actually the police intention written in the paper is that they are they don't agree if we ask for bail also so there is slim chance that the court will not give us the bail yeah? take put that aside even if the court let us bail it will be under certain condition and those con conditions will not be legitimate in my view mm. so if you are outside but without freedom what but if you are in jail and you raise your case i think being in jail will have more worth okay well i have to ask you this um it's kind of because you are a mother with one son right and i know that like you want to prove the case of like the freedom should like you know be allowed in the country but would it worth it that if you go to jail and you know with your family with your son uh, you have to understand that at this stage if I go to jail, it will be just 12 days per one request. I don't believe they will get me longer than 12 days. That's, my, that, that's, that's how I, I plan it. If they get me in jail for 12 days, but I am successful in raising the issue and let everyone see what happened to the rule of law of Thailand, I think it's worth it. It's just 12 days of freedom. And Okay, so that's on Monday. That was on Monday. That was on Monday and you get to come back home, see your son. Yeah. <laughs> everyone was happy, I remember, because everyone was so, like, you know, we were looking on Facebook and looking if you could come out or not after 2 p.m. Uh, everyone is happy and I'm grateful for that. But still, I have to emphasize that um, the main thing is not the temporary freedom. The main thing that we have to continue protecting is the rule of law. Yeah? I'm not fighting for my 12 days of freedom. I'm fighting so that we see the value of the rule of law, that everybody will be used together. Yeah, that's very good. And we have, like, how many people you have to fight for the rule of law now? How many people? How many have? people are fighting with you now? How many people are fighting with me? Um, depend on how you define the fight. Because, you know, so, sometimes when people share the message like this, they are part of the fight already. But when people come out to protest with us, they are part of the fight. When the media um, conveying our message, I, I, I think some of them, with, if it is with their intention to fight, they are part of the fight. So it de depends on how you define the fight. But if you talk about people who fully come out, expose themselves to fight, there are quite a limited number because under this context that we are under the absolute dictatorship fear is everywhere and they control us by fear and so far it is very effective um okay i'll come back to the fear and the movement later but because i think we should also go on with like what happened this week or else it will never finish right mm -hmm. so what happened this week like you know that's monday and then wednesday what happened wednesday is today today is for the second case rdn 50 on protest on russia Damnern. today is at the stage that the police summarize the case and submit their case to the attorney uh -huh. so at this stage we have to come to report ourselves the attorney will take the sum summary and go through it. It may take a few days or it take, may take month, a month and they will give us an appointment for us to come and listen to their consideration. Whether or not that case will be continued into the court or they just lift it because there's not, not enough um, ground. And you waited for a while before you could start begin like the hearing this morning yeah we waited for two hours before the police arrived because they give us appointment at 10 o'clock they show up almost at 12 o'clock the reason is instead of coming from the their police station to the attorney office they have to go to the chief police office the royal police 
Thailand, the, the, the Royal Police, Thailand Police Office on Rangri Dunang Road. They go there first because their boss wants to see their paper before they come to the attorney office. And this is not usual because they, they are supposed to come from their station to the attorney and no one should interfere the work of the police at this stage. Why do you think that the police put so much of the um, focus on these cases? Like, you know, what is their game plan? They want to please the, the junta, basically. Not every police wants to do so, but the deputy chief police, I can, I can say, he has very clear intention. Right from our first case, he went to the police station himself to make sure that the police sent us to the court and asked for detention. Uh -huh. So he had a very clear agenda. And from our view, it is because he wants to be a, the chief police before his retirement. This is his last chance because he's going to retire um, next year. So. I also thought, like, you know, I heard people saying that because they also want to stop you from more gathering in May. That, that's true. According to the, the paper that they submit to the court on Monday, asking for the detention of us, in the last um, topic of their reason, they say because we have planned to gather on the 5th of May. And to do the same thing and that's why they think the court should approve our detention so now that um, I think so it's very clear political um, motive in terms of how they process the case they want to stop us from being against the NCPO and the junta they want to stop us from criticize criticizing the government so especially in the context that we don't have opposition in the parliament, our media doesn't have any freedom. Mm -hmm. If they can, if they are successful in stopping us from criticizing them, no one will criticize them and they will continue their power quite easily. May is quite a big month for the Thai history and um, you are not only gathering on the fifth. if you can tell your fan on the, you know, the plan in May, like what will happen and uh, what are the dates so we know what to look out or people who are sitting at home may want to come join you. We will have our official announcement but now the dates I would like everyone to look for are the 5th of May, for sure we'll have an activity, um, 12th of May, yeah, to, to be considered, 19th to the 22nd of May will be very important time because the 22nd of May is the fourth anniversary of the coup. So we'll have something for sure and it will be peaceful but impactful. So watch out. <laughs> um, why 19? What happened there if you can remind the people as well? Actually, um, historically 19 of May, eight years ago, uh, 99 people were dead. Um, so it's part of the history. Actually, I think our, our reason, another thing is that 19 is Saturday and Saturday is quite convenient for people to join. And because it's just a few days before the 22nd of May, which is the fourth anniversary of the coup, so it kind of makes sense that make those important days come together and we'll have a series of the event. Uh, actually, by saying we, it's not just the we want to vote movement, but also maybe there are other groups who are planning series of events. So this is to be seen, but it is uh, the four important days. Um, going back to when you said people were living in fear, people are living in fear, right? And I think the peak of it, probably like when uh, we had the referendum and you, you, you people have the, um, also another movement back then for Port No, for the referendum, and you saw like a lot of the arrests and um, the lawsuit for mm -hmm. the activists and soldiers going around the country like monitoring closely for the referendum voting. University students were jailed for 21 days during that 
campaign. Yeah. Okay. So I just wonder that you know now that the time has passed and people kind of, you you see the trend of people losing patience with a lot of things going on with the watches with all of this thing. Do you think that people are kind of fed up with it, or how do you see the situation with the people? Are they still living in large fear, or are they just at the end of their ropes about their like patience now? They are fed up. Um, maybe at this level, their fear is also at this level. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's it's just like that. I don't know what to say. They 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 they, they have the reason to be fed up, but the level of fear is still high. What is your hope for um, your movement, and what is your hope for the country? Uh, we hope that our movement will inspire people to to start to do something, and it it doesn't mean that you have to come out to protest. We hope that our movement, and by saying movement, it's the communication actually, whatever it is, by doing Facebook Live, by going out on the street, is all communication. We hope that this communication will inspire people to do the right thing, and I'm talking about. People who are supporting the NCPO, or especially people who are in the legal system, the police. Yeah, many police are fed up. They want to do the right thing. They just need the courage to do it. The attorney, the court. Yeah, if everybody has the integrity and true to their duty, this will end very soon. What is your hope for the country? Uh, we hope uh, we will become a democratic country very soon, because that is the base for every development, and everybody deserves that. Because within democracy, there is the values that value your diversity, value your basic human rights, values your thought, and I think every human being deserves that. As simple as that. The election now is set on February two thousand nineteen. What is your guess, or what is your? <laughs> if you have to speculate on it, will it happen on that day? Will it happen before, or will it be postponed again? What do you think? Actually, I don't like speculation, but uh, many people guess it will be postponed. But for me, whether or not it's postponed, it doesn't matter as much as. Every day from now till then, what damage that this government is doing to the country? They are doing it on daily basis by passing the law according to their wish, by using our budget according to their wish, without transparency and without any monitoring. Yeah, by suppressing people's thought, by violating media freedom, it happens every day. So. I want the society not only to focus on the election day, whether or not it's postponed. It's not as important as from now to then is a year, and in one year, a dictator can do many things and anything, and that's why we have to stop, not only stopping the postponement of the election date. But stop them from damaging the country on a daily basis. If we do have the election according to the constitution now, from my understanding is that you can have the outside prime minister to speak mm -hmm. in. There how, is the possibility how, because they open that channel. Yeah. How democratic would that be for you, and how could we justify that this is the democratic society if we do have the election with that? That is not democratic, of course, because it is the, it's the motivation of the junta, and that is their aim, right? But our movement now is to stop that from happening, because if the voice of the people is loud enough through your representative that you will elect to be in the parliament, that will not happen. So people have to believe first that they can stop that by putting the act together. So if we do have the election, hmm. it is very important that you know what your representative can do for you in 
for the future of uh, yourself and also your next generation because that will dictate how we're going to live, right? Yes, the people who want democracy will have to make sure that you elect the party who gives you the promise that they will not take outsider prime minister in. Yeah, and many political parties already give that promise at the moment. So you just have to make sure you, you select well and make sure you push through, not let them break the promise. And, and I trust they won't break the promise. They are also uh, the victims. Mm. We are on the same boat. Mm. Yep. Well, I hope for like the best of the country as well that we're gonna have election soon and like we like you know have the right people who sit in the parliament to like you know make the right decision for us people who we vote for, right? Mm -hmm. I think we come to the end of the live. How many minutes now? Uh, let me see. How many minutes now? It doesn't show here, but but it's okay. Yeah, have many people are following. And, yeah, and if like you know they want to listen. To like us talking again, maybe we can. Thank do it you again. so much. But my last, very my helpful. last question. You're very welcome. My last question is that if you want to like tell your followers anything, any last thought, last words for this conversation. Keep keep our faith. Keep our faith. No matter what happened outside or within your heart, if if you are true to your heart, if you if you believe in what you believe in and you don't lose faith you will have the energy to push it through so don't lose your faith if you already lose your faith you know stop seeing news stop doing everything just just live your normal life and and keep your eyes shut it will be maybe more peaceful for you but if you if you still have interest in it keep your faith with it otherwise it will be very daunting and it will be very depressing Okay. I look forward <laughs> to see a lot of you guys on the first of May. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Go. Um. เดี๋ยวจะมาตอบคอมเมนต์ทีหลังนะคะขอบคุณทุกคนมากค่ะ